Hi everyone, this is Asian Trainee. And I'm Asia Joy. Today, we are going to talk about the two most important people in our lives. We are who we are today because of them. Our parents. Who among you here have parents who are actively involved in your education? Perhaps there are some with parents who are not involved at all. Well, Let's talk about it later on as our topic is about Parental Involvement So before we proceed, let's just watch a short clip from the movie Ang Tangi Ina. The link is provided on the description box below. You may pause this video and just resume watching afterwards. You may pause the video now. Ayan, diba? Ang daming quotable quotes sa mga sinabi ni Ina, yung character ni Ai Ai. Sobrang deep. Something to reflect upon talaga. <laughs> Debiro lang. So, yun yung isang example ng parental involvement in education. Yung implication na tinutulungan niya yung mga anak niya sa paggawa ng assignments, saka yung pag-iipag-usap niya sa teacher regarding sa academic concerns ng bata. So, before we proceed, interested din kaming malaman naman yung experiences ninyo with regards to the involvement of your parents sa pag-aaral ninyo. So you may pause this video and answer questions 1 and 2 on the comment section below and just resume afterwards. You may pause the video now. So let's now proceed to our objectives. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to appreciate the role of parents in the educational learning process, formulate your own concept of parental involvement in education, examine its Philippine context, evaluate its effectiveness, and develop a strategy to make it beneficial to parents, students, teachers, and the school. In the literature, there is no single definition agreed upon by researchers and other authors. However, what is common to all of them is that they look at parental involvement as the direct and or indirect means of involvement of parents in their children's academe. When we say direct involvement, ito yung tinutulungan ng parents yung mga anak nila sa pagawa ng homework, assignments, pagbibigay ng rewards kapag mataas yung grades, yung mga ganun bagay. Kapag naman sinabi nating indirect involvement, ito yung pag-attend ng parents sa meetings at conferences, pag-volunteer sa mga events na school. This does not mean that parents can only classify to one type. They can be involved through both direct and indirect means. Katulad doon sa video ni AI, example siya ng indirect parental involvement kasi nagkipag-usap siya sa teacher regarding sa academic concerns ng anak niya. At the same time, example din siya ng direct parental involvement dahil doon sa implication na tinutulungan niya yung anak niya sa paggawa ng homework or assignment. Para mas maintindihan pa natin, we'll be presenting to you different models about parental involvement from SWAP and Hornby. So yung models nila mostly nag-focus sa relationship ng teachers and parents sa education. Una, yung protective model. Dito, separate ang parenting and teaching functions. Bahala si teacher sa pag-aaral ng bata, bahala naman si parent sa pagpapalaki sa kanya. Dito, wala silang pakialamanan para maiwasan ng conflicts. Sinasabi rin dito na nakakasagabal yung parental involvement sa pag-aaral ng bata. Yung sumunod naman, which is transmission model, si teacher ang main source of expertise sa mga students. Ina-acknowledge pa rin naman bilang resource si parent na may maaaring makontribute sa pag-aaral ng mga bata. Pangatlo, yung expert model, dito ang perspective ng teachers as sila experts both sa development and education ng mga students. Hindi naman nila totally dinidismiss yung pwedeng mayambag ng parents, pero most of the time, hindi nila ito tinatanggap or hindi sila nagre-rely rito. Sumunod naman yung consumer model, para siyang kabaligtaran nung naunang expert model. Dito, tinitingnan si parent as consumer na kailangan isatisfy, kaya binibigyan siya ng marami options and siya yung bahalang mag-decide. Ang nagiging role na lang ng teachers dito ay bilang consultants. Panlima, sa curriculum enrichment model, dito hinahaya ng school na magbigay ng contributions sa parents regarding sa kung ano ang ituturo sa mga bata at kung paano ito ituturo. Ang risk dito is ina-assume na may kakayanan ang parent at may kaalaman siya regarding sa education similar to the knowledge and skills of the teachers. 
lastly and most importantly, yung partnership model. Ito yung most appropriate model for parental involvement. Bakit? Kasi dito, tinitingnan na pantay ang parents and teachers in the sense that teachers are regarded as experts on education while parents on their children. Dito, they are maximizing their capabilities and strengths para maibigay nila yung optimum education sa mga bata. Ngayong alam na natin na walang definite o maraming definitions ang parental involvement. Para naman sa iyo, paano ba dapat na involve yung mga magulang natin sa pag-aaral natin? And upon knowing the different models by Swap and Hornby, which one can you relate with the most? We would like to hear from you. So, katulad kanina, you may pause this video and answer questions 3 and 4 on the comment section below. You may pause the video now. Now, let's talk about the barriers that prevent the teachers from involving the parents in their children's education. At the same time, the challenges which the parents face that hinder them from involving themselves in their children's education. Barrier on the parent side they don't have the confidence to pull it off. Kung meron silang takot na baka hindi sila marunong magturo or i-properly guide yung mga mata. And there are also some parents who are willing to teach but do not have the time because they are working. So there is conflict of schedule. So on the teacher's side, mga teachers naman, they're worried that the parents are not well equipped to teach their children. And some teachers feel that it is already an added task to an already long list of teachers' responsibilities. The next barriers on the parents' perspectives are communication issues. Some parents feel that they are not given clear directions or guidelines as to what are expected from them, how far can they ask questions or make suggestions. The next barrier is lack of education or knowledge. So what can they teach when they do not know the lessons? The third are resources like time, money, transportation. The next barrier is when parents feel that they're only informed by the teachers when there are already problems that need to be resolved. And the last barrier is when some parents feel intimidated or unwelcome in school, making them feel uncomfortable working with the faculty. Meanwhile, Looking at the teacher's perspective, it can be reasoned out that some are confused when interacting with parents as there seems to be a mismatch in communication styles, often due to language and cultural differences. Some are concerned that a closer relationship with families means giving up their decision-making and authority in education. Another possibility that school staff are not well trained to work with families. Lastly, trust issues exist between teachers and parents as the parents would make sure that their children are taken care of the way they prefer it done, especially on children in their early childhood education. Parents are involved in education, it doesn't mean it is all good and beneficial. Let us now take a look at the negative effects of improper parental involvement. Parental involvement in education may affect social growth. The social aspects and routines in school greatly help in shaping the child into an adult he is to become. Spending too much time with the child may lead to an unhealthy attachment to the parents thus allowing the child to become more dependent. Some parents may cause more harm in the learning process of their children by assuming the responsibility of teaching a subject matter which they are not knowledgeable about. 
some parents may give outdated or misleading information which could make it more difficult for the children to learn certain subjects. Third, sometimes there are parents who are called lawn mowers because they tend to mow obstacles down so that their children will not experience them in the first place. This does not mean that making education convenient is a bad thing, but if their involvement blocks the growth and experiences of their children, it is no longer involvement, but interference. Lastly, the relationship of parents to their children may decline when the former sets unrealistic high expectations for low-performing students. Parents who demand or insist their children to focus on school works may appear to be too controlling, therefore negatively stresses the matter. Cannot be denied that parents have good intentions when involving themselves in their children's education. However, when their involvement is improper or unregulated, it can only make their children's learning and education worse. Knowing all these challenges, we have four main strategies on how we could help promote parental involvement in education and at the same time combat the barriers it includes. First, parents have to be engaged in student affairs. Yung ibig sabihin natin dito is yung pagiging hands on ng mga magulang sa pag-aaral ng mga bata. Inclusive dito yung direct parental involvement na napag-usapan natin kanina. Some examples are pag a sa homeworks or assignments, pag review ng lessons, yung pangungumusta sa academics, mga ganong bagay. Dito, dapat alam ng mga magulang yung nangyayari sa mga anak nila para alam din nila kung paano nila matutulungan o mabibigyan na assistance yung mga bata. Pero take note lang, hindi dapat to sobra-sobra. Katulad nga dun sa nabanggit natin kanina, baka instead na mas mapabuti ito is mas mapa sa mapa. Second, parents and schools have to communicate with one another. Kagaya nga sa naging discussion natin kanina about sa models, pinakamaganda yung partnership, which is yun yung kailangan nating ma-achieve. As future educators, kailangan mayroon tayong communication sa mga parents kung saan po pwede nating ma-relay yung mga concerns sa mga bata, yung mga conferences, yung mga events, at iba pa. Here in the Philippines, as per DEPED Memorandum Order No. 74, Series of 1999, mayroon mga Parent Teacher Associations o PTA. Dito, nagkakaroon ng discussion ang parents and teachers regarding sa mga relevant concerns sa education ng mga bata. Third, parents have to participate in school affairs. Kung kanina, andun tayo sa student affairs, ngayon naman yung participation is andun sa school mismo. Kasama dito yung most activities na nasa indirect parental involvement. Sinasabi rin dito na kailangan proactive ang parents instead na reactive. Kasi diba most of the time, na-involve lang yung mga magulang kapag may nagawang kalakuhan ng student o kaya kapag at the end of the year mayroong awarding ceremony. Hindi lang daw dapat ganito. Kailangan ng active presence ng magulang sa education at the same time, participation sa mga events ng school that could foster stronger relationship that could lead to better partnership. One good example nito is, here in the Philippines, mayroon tayong tinatawag na prekada eskwela. Ginagawa ito sa mga public schools before mag-start ang school year kung saan nagtutulungan yung iba't ibang stakeholders voluntarily para mapaayos at mas mapaganda yung mga eskwelahan. Lastly, schools have to support and partake in the promotion of parental involvement in education. Oo nga, dapat may gawin ng parents and teachers to foster and promote parental involvement. Pero hindi ba mas maganda kung yung institution mismo mayroong mga programs and initiatives to support this? ba? According sa isang survey, sinasabi na parents wanted to be treated with respect and not have a relationship similar to that of a professional client. Schools then should train their faculty and staff on how to effectively engage with parents, especially they have diverse backgrounds. At the same time, pwede rin sila mag-conduct ng trainings and seminars for parents naman on how they can support their children's educational needs. Sa side naman ulit ng teachers, may mga nagsasabi na masyado naman bigat yung workload nila para makipag-interact pa sa mga parents. What schools can do is that they can free some of their faculty's working time to allow them to communicate and connect with the parents. They can also maximize the use of ICT para ma-update and ma-involve pa rin ang parents. Useful talk, lalo na kapag may mga time conflict between parents and teachers. May suggestion din from studies na 
free service pa lang, isama na dapat sa teacher education program yung pagkipagtrabaho sa mga magulang. Sa gayon, natitrain na rin sila on that aspect. These strategies are properly implemented. Benefits arise from parental involvement. Various studies, involvement of parents strengthens the child's brain development. Children also excel academically as they exhibit faster literacy acquisition and earn higher grades and test results. With parental involvement, students tend to have better social skills and behaviors. This also reduces their absenteeism tendencies. While being involved benefits the children holistically, it also enhances the educational awareness of the parents or family members. Furthermore, parents would have a better connection with their children as well as their children's teachers and friends. In the same way, parents would have a better understanding of the school's functions and the students' educational challenges. Moreover, they would gain confidence in their ability to help their children in the classroom assignments as well as improve their own skills as they play an active role in the classroom learnings. Likewise, the teachers benefit from parental involvement in education. This increases their knowledge on how they can become effective educators for the children. In addition to that, their interaction with the parents may elicit positive feedback which may increase their feelings of competence in their profession and advocacy of their interest. Also makes teaching easier as parental resources supplement and reinforce their own efforts in the classroom. Most importantly, as teachers, they are able to connect with their students and understand more about their lives, allowing them to provide a better contextualization and application of classroom learnings into relevant and meaningful ways in the society. Now that we know all these benefits arising from parental involvement, what other strategies can you think of to promote such in education? We will be glad to know what you are thinking. Again, you may pause this video and answer question number 5 on the comment section below. You may pause the video now. I have discussed how there are a lot of barriers with regards to the involvement of parents in their children's education. Definitely, we cannot resolve it in just a day or two. It is a continuous process of clearing misconceptions, believing in each stakeholder's capabilities, trusting one another, and improving the system. It is only when these barriers are strategically resolved that positive outcomes from parental involvement be achieved. That's right, Agent Choi. I would just like to add and remind everyone of the adage, Lahat ng sobra ay masama. I assume naman na lahat tayo familiar doon, di ba? This also applies in parental involvement. Maka natatanong natin, Kailan ba magiging sobra yung parental involvement? Ano nga ba yung tamang parental involvement? Sa totoo lang, hindi namin masasabi. Bakit? Kasi iba-iba siya eh. Iba-iba siya sa situation ng mga bata. Wala siyang formula. What works for me may not work for you. What we're trying to say here is that we should not focus on the involvement of parents per se. Rather, let us look at how can this involvement of parents be beneficial for the children. Sa lahat lahat ang natutunan natin sa klase, sa mga previous missions, ang center natin ay palaging nasa learner, nasa student, nasa bata. At sana panatilihin natin ganon bilang mga susunod na guro ng bayan. have any questions, comment it down below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you for watching and participating. We hope to see you on your next mission. Bye!